So I know you've seen 3D printed speakers before, but usually, you know, the speaker part is just the enclosure, just the box. And that's fine, but that's usually a pretty simple project. It's a box with best case, uh, a port included or integrated into it. What we're gonna do today is different. This is, yes, this is also a 3D printed enclosure for a speaker, but it's also using a 3D printed driver. This is Paul Ellis's FD52, which is as close to fully 3D printed of a speaker driver as it gets. It also uses a 3D printed passive radiator in the back, and of course this entire enclosure is also printed. So this is as close to a fully 3D printed speaker as it gets. By the way, if you're wondering how I keep the music consistent through these cuts, what you're hearing is the output of this actual speaker. It's just that I've pre-recorded it beforehand. I don't want to jump cut through music. So let's get this thing printed. I'm going to walk you through the build and print process for this driver and for the enclosure as well. Uh, the driver is pushing what we can do with our filament based printers to the limit. It's using flexible materials. This is Ninja Flex. It's using um, single walled PTG prints. Um, this is Colorfab XT. And everything about this is just at the very edge of our printers can do. And I find that really interesting because it's challenging, but it's also not totally impossible on a normal printer. So we're going to print this today. Let's get going. And this video is sponsored by Elegoo and their Neptune 2 3D printer. At an affordable price, it comes with a flex bed and color touchscreen with print previews. And if you want to tinker and upgrade, it's largely compatible with mods designed for the Ender 3. I'll be using the Neptune 2 for the PLA prints in this project. Check it out at the link in the description below. So now the speaker is built and it is ready for testing. I'm powering this off of my like experimental mini speaker setup, which is in function very similar to this. It's got a battery system on there, a charger, a DSP and an amplifier. And I'm using the DSP to tune in the sound of these speakers. 
but we're also going to measure this speaker and see what the numbers say, how this thing performs, and I can then base the DSP tune off of what I'm measuring. So the first job is to delete the profile for this mini speaker off of the DSP and get a flat EQ profile on here so that we can measure what this driver does and what the speaker does without any external help. So with the frequency response of the speaker measured, I can start building an EQ profile for this specific enclosure, driver, and passive radiator combination. The goal is to have a mostly flat frequency response. You can't really compensate for every single peak and valley, but you can get the general profile as flat as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend the high end a bit by boosting those upper frequencies. I'm gonna take out that peak around 200 to 300 Hertz so that we get rid of that warbly boomy sound. And I'm gonna extend the low end a bit by boosting those very low frequencies, which is the same range where the passive radiator should help us with a bit of boost. I'm also gonna add in a super bass block, which yes, is kind of cheating. It's kind of distorting the low end, but to be honest, uh, small speakers without that just sound super thin. It's not gonna to be totally accurate anymore, but to be honest, a small speaker like this is never gonna be 100% accurate. So I'd rather have it sound good to my ears than for it to be technically totally perfect. So let's get this flashed to the DSP, take a quick measurement of the before and after. And of course, we're gonna take a listening test to it as well. Now, I don't know how that sounded to your ears, but honestly, I am extremely happy with how this turned out. Now, obviously, a commercial speaker, one that you buy, for example, these, these PC68s that I've got in here, they are still a bit better, but I'm actually really surprised by how close this pretty simple 3D printed driver got to a commercial offering and mass produced offering like this. Now, obviously, Paul Elling, Paul M83D, uh, he's still working on all these different driver variations. This FT52 isn't the only one he's got. He's also got bigger drivers. He's got some that he's put all the learnings from this smaller FD51 and 52 series into. And Paul has already released some of those models on his Patreon. So if you want to check it out, uh, the link to that is in the description below. Now, as always, the fascinating thing is that 3D printing just gives you the tools to iterate on things like this quickly. You don't have to go to a manufacturer to get your, your prototypes built and to get, you know, parts for stuff and wait for iterations. You can literally, you know, design something, check it on the printer, over there, check it on the printer and have your prototype hours later instead of having to wait weeks for an iteration. And I think there is still lots to come for these 3D printed speakers and 3D printed drivers in this case. The FT51 and FT52 eventually are open source and free design. So if you wanna try that out, you can do that as well. These are pretty cheap to make. They do take a bit of effort, but honestly, if you have a small speaker project that you wanna do in a budget, these are well worth looking at. Also the passive radiator that, you know, is basically just a side product of the speaker development that Paul is doing. I think these are fantastic. And if you look at this speaker, you know, the PC68 are like eight bucks or something. 
and the passive radiator that go with it uh, are 10 bucks. So these are crazy expensive for what they are. And if you can just print them, that obviously makes building speakers a lot more accessible and a lot cheaper overall. So I'm very excited about how well this entire thing turned out. Um, I'm also very excited about what is still to come here. Now, if you want to try and print this exact speaker as well, you can obviously download all the files for that in the description below. Um, I, be warned, my enclosure design is very sloppy um, and it does take a bit of silicone to put it together. But hey, if you want to try it, be my guest. And the only reason I can do designs and projects like these are because of my awesome patrons. Uh, thank you all who are already supporting me. If you want to check out how you can support this channel as well, uh, link is in the description. And obviously also the link to Paul's patron is in the description as well if you want to support his driver designs which made this entire thing possible in the first place. So thank you all for watching. Um, get subscribed if you want to see more projects like this. I know I keep saying this, but just, you know, subscribe. <laughs> Do it. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep on making. See you later. Goodbye.